Yesterday, I did a radio show on UCY TV uh, with Lonnie Clark. Lonnie Clark was kind of interviewing me, I suppose you could call it. And uh, as you see, I'm resurrecting, I'm resurrecting uh, Elfo, the uh, Fukushima elephant. Anyway, uh, I felt a little bit uh, listening back, it was, uh, you know, in the circumstance, it's a live thing and you're talking, you're thinking, and I get excited and uh, thinking about stuff. And it was a little bit muddled, the whole free radical concept, the plan I proposed. And I want to clarify a few things, where I'm coming from, what my thoughts are, and how this free radical thing, uh, for me, it, it's an ongoing developing uh, concept becoming more real all the time, not only in the work that I do and other uh, painters at this point, painters are doing, but this concept is, when I think about it, in terms of an art movement, it originates out of an artistic desire, a creative desire. It's not based on economy and gain and profit and wealth and value or uh, any kind of ulterior motive. It's, there is a purity within the concept of free radicals, the free radicals, and I want to clarify, I'm going to try to do this, and my plan, what I propose, what I tried to explain on the radio uh, with Lonnie yesterday, and what I want to say in, uh, to start off with, I am basically in my channel expressing myself within the framework that I call inspiration. And I did a video, I said uh, inspiration or information will end the nuclear, the age of fission. And I have to tell you that, I mean, I'm not going to be rigid about you can or can't do this. It's just where I come from my experience, what I'm excited about. And I actually feel that inspiration at this point, at this point, in a collective way, inspiration, that which gets a person excited about waking up in the morning and being alive. You're in love. You have a project. You have something to work on, to live towards, to understand, to incorporate, to feel excited about is what is going to actually make the difference. Because, and it's not a rule. I'm not saying you can or can't do something. I'm just saying out of the experience, out of the tradition that I align myself with, my extended family, which is the art tradition, which is something that I've, in the best way that I can through my work, have represented in my work this tradition. It's called art. It's called painting specifically. And here's the connection I'd like to try and make through the free radicals and the plan. And the idea that I proposed, other than, of course, my free radical concept, pulls in painters uh, within a process that I've developed that I call the free radical process, which I use now all the time. Like in the back, what you see, the images, the paintings, all are produced within this concept of free radical that I call free radical. But there is an a priori to this, which is my own experience of making paintings in a certain way, that I have come to make paintings a certain way, which is the free radical. No one else is doing that. I have invented a materialist substance that actually works very elegantly with the combination of polytar plastic that I use and in combination with this medium that I use in order to make an image look a certain way. And what it has done, it's, it's somewhat similar. The free radicals is somewhat similar to an artist that I really like, not at all the way I work, but somebody called Georg Baselitz. Check out Georg Baselitz. And Georg Baselitz basically proposed, uh, in, a, in a very nutshell, quick uh, description, to reverse all his imagery. And it's not that it hadn't been done before. I mean, you look at Chagall's paintings with the people upside down or the heads upside down. There, there is a tradition in art to inverting 
things. It, it's not the only one, but he focused on it. He dedicated himself to create a vision based on this reversal idea. And it's very similar to the process that I'm working with from the point of view that I can incorporate again all of art history in a new way. It's, it's being, putting, putting painting, the substance of painting, through a process that reinvents the surface of a painting. It's no longer the way it used to be under Rembrandt or Giotto, and Giotto used uh, gold leaf. I mean, the icon painters used gold leaf, and they meticulously painted their subjects with, with incredible scrutiny, or Rembrandt, who had uh, multiple, multiple, multiple layers of glazing to create a dark feeling in his paintings, which are superb and mysterious, how his eyes emerge out of these paintings sometimes. And he did a lot of self-portraits. You look at these eyes, they're just incredible through this. Uh, the, the way he actually managed to produce his work, or Caravaggio, the chiaroscuro, that kind of feeling of, uh, of magical, what is that? that, that drama that he creates in his paintings through a way of painting something. And what I have done with this feeling concept of free radical in a practical way is redefine the surface of a painting. The way Jackson Pollock, I go on about him, how he redefined the surface of the painting, both through the way he did it and the result, what he ended up with. Hadn't been done before. So in a sense, I liberate myself from this conundrum of subject because I can choose anything what I want, whether there are paintings that have been produced in the past or my own formulations, whatever. I mean, it, it gets a little bit more complex to d discuss subject, but in essence, it's irrelevant. Subject is irrelevant. It's the act of placing something on a surface that will never look or has never looked this way. So that is the free wrath. And I'm extending this as an invitation, the free radical, not just to a group of two or three or even ten. If you have group shows of ten artists or even something like the Biennales, those big monumental curated shows like Documenta or the Venice Biennale where they draw the cream of the crop to express a vision, a view of the world through artistic eyes and they call them Biennales or the documenta every seven years in Caso that these brilliant curators come together. Actually, they do choose uh, some fabulous work. I've been inspired by some of that stuff. But the idea of the free radical surpasses that. It surpasses that in that it pulls in potentially thousands and thousands of artists. Now, I personally can't, can't physically produce the free radical work for thousands of artists. That'll take a lot of different people involved and that's what I'm attempting to do. This is on a on a mini scale my proposal was to say you're all free radicals from the point of view we are in the age of vision and the vision of a free radical in terms of what I'm doing as a painter is something that has never happened before the same way as the age of vision and that we need to become inspired as a counter to this destruction, the age of fission, through creativity, through an application of inspiration. And now just think of it this way, the plan I offer, to take a package, and at this point it includes possibly seven, six or seven artists, and to make proposals in your community, in your country, or internationally, somewhere else, to take these the, these packages of artworks, video, painting, possibly there would be sculpture as well. And it's principally right now a, a small group of artists, which I want to expand into a very large group. And it's not the idea of a group show that if you go to a gallery that has their vision and reproduces the curators or the gallery directors reproduce their vision based on economy and selling most of it, most of the stuff, and curators want to be remembered in the future as being brilliant. You don't remember any curators. Alfred Barr, possibly, from, uh, uh, he started the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and he was a, a, he had a, he was a visionary because he drew in the great artists 
like Matisse and Braque and Picasso in the early days and started an institution that was based on the best of the best work uh, ending up in this place, Alfred Barr, he will be remembered, but a lot of the other curators, uh, most of them will be just totally forgotten, and this is their demise, this is why they're so arrogant and have such a problem with all of this, they have a problem with artists, they prefer not to deal with artists, <laughs> museums, <laughs> museums prefer not to deal with artists, because quite often they're egotistical and shitheads and all that kind of stuff. So the free radical proposal that I made is based on a process of including a lot of people, but not just uh, artists or painters, but people of conscience who are inspired by these concepts, what Blanche is talking about with post-ignorance and free radicals delivers post-ignorance, that's a whole other concept that is I have added to this idea of free radicals, which is elegant in itself as well, because two art movements that are so distinct from each other, Blanche and myself, coming together to work towards a, the same result, that is to eliminate the age of fission out of our lives, to get to, to, get to the next age, post-ignorance, the age of fission needs to be eclipsed by post-ignorance anyway. The inspiration part in us will get us there. Not the information. We all have the information. We don't have the inspiration in order to get ourselves moving. And I have made this proposal, this plan, and it's not based on ego and me, 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 me. It's based on the idea that all of us need to have something to wake up to other than just listening to YouTubes or information on the uh, news that isn't being produced on this catastrophe, but always like checking for the latest and the greatest and missing, missing everything as it, as it goes along. So just imagine that 10, 15, 20, 100 people take a package on a, on a USB stick that I would send you and we would cooperate with people that are interested in this to make a presentation, to try and get a visual, a face-to-face -face confrontation with a curator and demand that they look at this work. And I guarantee it is historically significant because as a painter over 40 years, I've understood what it means to make a good, to make a painting that has, that is serving you something, that is giving you something to chew on. And for them to just sort of throw it out as, ah, we don't like that idiosyncrasy because that's all what it's being reduced to now. This is very much tied to history. The production of painting and art and history. I am tied into history. I am not just some uh, quirky snot-nosed 20-year-old graduate from, and I, I have nothing against students in, in art schools, but they're not my inspiration. I'm not inspired by people who've managed to work on their creativity for five years or even 10 years or even 15 or 20 years sometimes. It takes a long time. So it's not a derisive comment, it's a reality that we're not inspired by people who haven't had the experience to tie things in. And occasionally there are geniuses, I guess, like Mozart that come out when they're three or four or five and are able to do amazing stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm not like that, I'm a late bloomer. So just the follow up and I, it'll get, I think I can get uh, probably more details in this, but if you listen to the radio show, I didn't really explain this as well as I wanted to. And I've, I've done this before on my YouTube channel and explained, tried to explain this program I'm proposing for people to get involved with me. And if it takes off to the point where there are more people and the art, when this art sells, it will sell. This nuclear Fukushima art that we're producing, it will sell. There will be money to have people that work with us, Blanche, myself, Lonnie. Lonnie, Lonnie will be on the job. She's, I, she would be the person hired to, uh, to you know, at, on the job every day to coordinate stuff like this. And uh, Lonnie makes paintings herself. But I think she would agree to doing this, to doing this administrative work and coordinating and bringing people in, whatever it takes, to disseminate this. And I, I'm not really thinking of this becoming too huge because I, I work, I don't have assistance. Well, I, I do occasionally, but I don't like the idea of 
uh, doing work that I'm not involved in. But this is so big, I would adjust my own process, my own way of working. And the free radical will, in my vision, if it works, it will include thousands, thousands. Not like a group show, like Documenta of 150 or 200 artists, it'll be thousands. In all the major centers of the, on the planet, or not so major centers on the planet, the free radicals could produce the work. It's my vision, that's my thought. And if you want to get involved, contact me. And there have been a few people uh, that have contacted me and I've sent packages to them and I'm working on this uh, with uh, Eric Jordan as well. And uh, uh, yeah, I will update and I hope that helps and clarifies uh, in front of my resurrected uh, Elmo the Elephant.